Okay, good morning everyone. This is Melissa Arma with the StockSwish.com and I'm reviewing big. And I'm out of this big, but you could still be in it. Very, very quickly, for everyone that is actually still in the big, let me tell you what to do with this. First of all, you should definitely, 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 definitely be out of half. If you are still in the total entire trade of this, then uh, I really wouldn't be. I mean, I just wouldn't be. You should either be out of the whole thing or half or 75%. Actually, just write it in the room right now. Who's in what? Who's in what of this big? I'm out of the whole thing. Actually, it did not get over 48, but this basically was the target. 48, five pennies from the target. Time of the day, 10.15. Is anyone still in this? Can everyone hear me? Am I talking to myself? <coughs> Excuse me. Wheezy's out. Galahad just got out. Okay. Did anyone hold it all the way up over 90? Just quickly, right in the room. Does anyone, did anyone hold it over 90? Did anyone hold it over the push? Here, this is still going to try to get over 48. I mean, if you want to be in this all day, you you probably could get this up to 49 something or even 50. I mean, this looks amazing. In fact, Trade Circle was trying to say, how did I know it was going to go over the high? Because I can feel it. Because I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it right now. It's going to push over it. Here it goes. And I'm so good at reading live price. There's no one better than me that reads live price. No one. Look at this. Here it goes. Wow. But it's how long can you stand it? Ah! Look at it! Is anyone still in it? I mean, I don't think it should be in the whole thing no matter what anyways, but look. Wow. Let me just see something here. 48, 10 minus. Let me see what I got out of it. I could have made another thousand dollars. But, I mean, what are you going to do? This was so hard today. So hard. Galahad got out of 4781. Given, given the toughness of this today, I couldn't have played it any better, all right? But I am so good at reading price. So Trade Circle was asking me about how did I know? Because it's almost like I'm living in this one minute chart here. I mean, I live in the one minute chart. I just live in this chart and I'm living with this stock and I'm breathing the stock. And I can feel it. I can just feel it. Just like I feel heaviness when we short, I can feel the lightness and the push went along. And we rarely do longs, but I went long today. I can just feel it. And also I'm reading the gap. I mean, I'm reading the gap, but I'm telling you as far as watching this, like you, it's hard to see this now because everything's flat. But you saw it with me. This was wild. And it's hard to see it now because it's flat. It's still higher though. Anyways, I'm really good at reading live price action in the movement. And I got good at doing that because I trade gaps. And that teaches you how to read price in a very advanced manner. This is still going because this isn't even a number there. 4850. 4850. This will get to 4850 today. Wow. But I mean, the time of the day to predict that, again, is an unknown. Go over the high here again. Train circle, you like want me to teach you everything I know in a trial. That's number one, impossible, and number two, ridiculous. <laughs> so I don't know what to say, but look, this is getting over the high. Is anyone still in this at all? Oh, my Lanta. Is anyone at all? 4850. It's gonna go there. Man, if this, this, I'm not even kidding you. Like, this will get to $50. If it doesn't get to $50 today, it will, like, by Monday morning. This is crazy. Like, this is, this was a great gap. I knew it. I mean, I actually got up this morning, and I looked at the shorts from last night. I looked at the shorts this morning, and I said, look, here, it's getting there right now. All right, I might have to cry, actually, if this goes to $50 today. But, you know, it was a weird week. This was the weirdest week of trading I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but anyways, let's get back to the gap. Um... Cost 007 is still in it? Of course you are, because you risked $5,000 in every trade and you haven't done the class yet. <laughs> Trader Gal is going to come to your house in California and have a powwow with you for doing the crazy things you're, you've been doing. And you've been lucky that they haven't worked against you, but time is not on your side, so i got to be honest with you. <laughs> time is not on your side. Trader Gal will be knocking at your door momentarily. How much did I make today? That's not even the feat. Well, it is a feat because this is tough. Here, I made $1,400 today in this. $1,451, but I was down in this. Crap, I lost it. Where did it go? I was down in it before I made that money. That's 
the real feet. Do you understand? That's the feet. And I actually could have made almost double that now if I'd still be in it. The real feat in this today is what? Let's go over it. First of all, this was hard as far as the setup today. Not the actual gap. The gap was beautiful and I love the gap. But there was one problem. One problem. It was in an area that was a situation. And I knew that. I absolutely knew it. And I gave it a wide stop. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. We should have gave it the minimum, the maximum, the absolute maximum area, which I said. Here, I'm just going to read it again. Why? I should just don't do everything I know. Every second I'm breathing. In an ideal world, big comes into $46. That's exactly what it did. And sets up in the first five minutes of the day. Well, it did set up in the first five minutes of the day. I should have taken and put the stop under 46. If it sets up ASP in a one minute high, which it did not do. I have to get out of at least half ASAP which we could have done. I mean, we actually could have done that, but it's like into the first rally. Though, in an ideal world, it really should hold 46 and not break it at all. Perfect. I mean, perfect. It really did do exactly what I said, but it was tough. Anyways, we did this in here. Rally, we were up very, very quickly. Love this entry. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful time of the day. It's good in the market, I said. Had the potential today to hold and go crazily bullish or stay in the area. Anyways, boom. So we got stopped out. I was like, just let's just take it again. And we we almost like, I was like, just take it. No hesitation. Like I didn't even want to, need, this was the confirmation. The actual touchdown on the number was the confirmation of the number which I knew it should be. So then I had no hesitation to retake it. And I did. I just said, boom. The weird thing though today was to go long to get filled. I got filled weird lot sizes and I don't like that. So then I killed all the weird ones. I just like a flat number with zeros. <clears throat> Anyways, then this did this. And then all of a sudden my PML was up crazily. But this one here was down. I'm down a lot because I really love the gap. And then I was up a lot. And then this happened so fast. I thought this would immediately follow through. Then it didn't. And it came in, and it came in, and it came in. And you know what? Traders are trying to short this. So this blew over the high here when traders shorted this sell setup. And they were up money in here unless they got out. Do I think they did? No. Why? Probably because they thought it would come in and fall into the area of support. Wrong way to look at it. Why? Great bullish gap. We'll go over that in the daily chart in a minute. Anyways, I stayed with it, stayed with it, retook it. Up all this money, still stayed with it. If we played longs every day, we would trade a little bit differently. What would we do? We would not wait until we saw the second bar to immediately necessarily get out. Sometimes we might get out into the flurry, which we could have done here. We don't trade longs every day. They're different, 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 different. That's why I have a different class for longs. They're very, very different. I'd like to say they're similar, but they're not. They're different. You saw this today. Look. Anyways, then this was wild. I said, you can take more, you can take more, you can take more, 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 more. Rally, rally, rally. We stayed with it. And it did get up to 48, which I said. I forget the exact minute I got out in here. I don't even remember. I'll have to go look at it. Anyways, I got out. And then it did go over 48. This did not really blow over 48, though. And, you, and really, this is the morning move. The only way you're still in this now at 1022 on a Friday in the middle of summer is if you think that you're going to hold this for the rest of your life to 4 o'clock. But I don't think you should be in all of the whole thing anyways. But the reason this is such a beautiful day today for me to make almost $1,500 is because of what I was down. It's because what I was down. It's because of the amount of money that I was down in this and then felt the confidence and the conviction to retake the trade. I was down $1,800. And I pressed the button again. And do you know if this would have stopped how much I would have lost? I would not have had a good weekend. I'll tell you that. But it worked. And I was right. And now I'm up $1,500. I flipped 100% in my P&L. Sometimes you have to retake a trade. There's nothing you can do. And if I'd held this even a little teeny weeny 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 bit longer, I would have made actually almost double, double what I'm up now. But I did the right thing. Why? Because I did 100% flip. And I know from the previous experience of things, if you're down and something doesn't work out sometimes and then you have a chance to come back on the day a beautiful amount of money, what is that to me? Anything with a comma in it, quite frankly. Anything with a comma in it, a beautiful amount of money to me, whether it's a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, I'll take it. So it doesn't buy you a whole pair of shoes. Oh, you know what? Oh, my ranta. I just realized I forgot to tell you people this because we had no time to talk this morning, or maybe I did. I'm wearing a 
beautiful pair of earrings that I just got this week. These were my good luck charms today. <gasps> I'm going to wear them every day I trade now. I just decided. Yep. I just realized it now, why we did so well. And it was so hard. And these earrings were the good lucks. I'm wearing them every day. Um, fortune favors the bold. I bring new meaning to that. If you want me to talk slower, trade circle, you're in the wrong room. <laughs> Anyways, this is a nice, nice, uh, beautiful chart. But it was hard. The You basically traded the numbers today. If you didn't know how to do that, you didn't know what to do. GBH and Melissa, congrats, people. I have no idea how hard it was for you to get back in after taking the loss. Yes. And then we started chanting. The chanting worked. Maybe we start doing that too. The earrings, the chanting, whatever it takes. All right, let's look at the daily chart. Everyone should be up. Did anyone not retake it? Be honest, write it in the room. Every single solitary person in here should be up. And if you held it longer than me, you should be up even more. R squared said, really nice job, Melissa. Top. I'm slow and steady with my trading as far as what I'm doing, but I strike when the iron is hot, and that's how you really have to trade. Slow and steady doesn't win the race in reference to taking the actual trades. As far as your commitment level, yes, slow and steady. That philosophy is true, but not as far as the actual trading. wrong -o. Because if you were slow and steady with this today, you got clobbered. And you probably went long and short and shorted and longed it and went a hundred different ways. Turtles don't win in the market unless your name is Warren Buffett. And you have tons of millions of dollars and billions of dollars to invest. And you can wait like a turtle. Somehow Melissa and Turtle don't really mesh. I wonder who I'll end up marrying. He definitely won't be a turtle. I really wonder who I'll end up marrying. It'll have to be someone that equals my energy level or that has a greater energy level than me. Do you think that person exists on the planet? <laughs> I wonder if that person exists on the planet. Let's take a vote. Do you think there's any man on the planet? It has to be when the age rates that I can marry him. So it can't be 16 and he can't be like 75. That equals my energy level or exceeds mine on the planet that I could marry. Do you think that person exists on the planet Earth? Surf Dog said no. Galahad said not possible. I Silver said laugh out loud. Trade Circle says I'd give the guy a heart attack. <laughs> uh, New Jersey Trader said yes, but he's already married. Oops. That's a situation. <laughs> That's a situation. Not necessarily one with more energy, but one with more insight. Perhaps but not with the market. All right, let's go over it. Talk about insight. Now, Tom read a thing in the room in the morning. He said, oh, he almost jinxed us. Tom said, oh, that gap up is big. Not to me. I didn't think the gap up was big. I thought it was fine. I thought it was fine. Why? Because I really liked the gap. And I thought, fine. If I have to take it twice, then so be it. I really didn't want to. And I gave it a big, big stop. But I really thought that actually the way that it opened and treated the way it did down immediately and then did the flip was actually a hold, but it didn't do it. It didn't do it because why? The stock is wild and whipping. It doesn't have a lot of machines in it. And the number really was 46. Anyways, some traders thought the gap up was big and wanted to short it and short it to come in, to come into here, 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 a fall. And that's why it was kind of squishy on the one minute chart. But we are with, guess what? The institutional money, the institutional money. And look at this going 4850 today for big. Look, it's going over 48 again. This was a beautiful gap. So I rated the gap. And I do bullish gaps like maybe three times a year. After yesterday. And, and after yesterday. And the lecture I was going to give today, really, I'm just giving right now, which is basically on trusting yourself. I said earlier in the week, we're not doing anything this week unless it's absolutely perfect. And I'm going to be a picky poo. And yesterday morning, what did I do? I wanted to trade so badly. And I wasn't a picky poo enough. And then I thought about that last night. And I said to myself, Oh, my Lanta. I mean, I'm never wrong when I trust my intuition and listen and do with what it says. Today is a perfect example. Look how well we did today in this, and it was hard. So I know what I need to do. It's just about trusting yourself. I'll have to do a video about this over the weekend, but the reality is the lesson for the day, and the lesson for the week is trust yourself. This was a hard week. Do you have any idea how many traders lost money this week? Billions and millions and lots and lots of people. And actually, you should be up this week. 
from the calls I made or not doing anything the days I didn't. Even though we had a hard time in this today, we made money. Yesterday, the whatchamacallit one didn't work, but you know what I said? That's it, boop, 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 and we shut out the room quickly because I didn't want everyone to get nuts. And you know what? Nothing worked then later. Nothing worked then later. Thank goodness I went with my instinct then at 10 o'clock and said, we're done, go to the gym, because it was insane yesterday then. I mean, you couldn't find anything to short yesterday to save your life. Nothing was weak yesterday in the market. And again, that's a sign the market's higher. But absolutely nothing could have been shorted yesterday. And I'm not sure anything could have been shorted today. And when I get up this morning and I saw no good bearish gaps, I thought, all right, fine, let's look at the longs. And guess what? I saw one and it was this. And so I, I said, I knew it. I knew it as soon as I saw it. Before I even rated it, it was good. So I rated it then for the confirmation and we did it. It was hard. It was hard. And I, this stock normally is not, I wouldn't say this is normally hard. I would say it's normally easy. I would say it's normally has a lot of machines. But I would say, really. When you go long, which I don't go long that often, you do have to be a little bit more patient and you do have to give a little bit more um, room in the stop. Look, this is gonna go over the high again. <gasps> wow, I mean, how could you possibly still be in this room? Where did this come in? Let me just look. Anyways, uh, look at this. This is this is really, yep. Look at this. This is, wow. This was a great call today, and I know it was hard, but we could not have done it any better. Did anyone not retake it? Everyone should be up today. This was a great call, and we couldn't have done it any better. So the lecture, really, and the lesson for the week is trust your instinct and trust yourself. Even if you're in a learning curve, you should trust yourself. Why? Because you don't start to trust yourself now. Even if you're new and don't know what you're doing, how are you going to trust yourself later when you know what to do? You're still questioning yourself. You have to just trust yourself and you'll learn from the thing if you make the, a, a, a mistake. So you have to trust yourself. And yesterday I knew what to do. And the other day and earlier in the week I did too. And you know what? I could have said, let's all take the week off. Let's all go to whatever. If I had a house at the Hamptons, which I don't yet, but someday I will. I could have said, let's all just meet there and take the week off. Because there was really, after Monday, this whole week was like, just pack it in. Put it in the trash can and go. So we should be happy that we made money this week. But the whole week was just completely ridiculousness. And I knew that. And that's why yesterday I was like, ugh. Because I knew I was going to be a picky poo about everything this week. And then when I saw that nothing was right yesterday, I said, I'm not doing anything today unless it's perfect. I'm really not. And when I didn't see any bearish gaps, I said, I'm not doing them. And then I was looking for a long, and I thought, if I don't see a good long, then we're just going to do nothing today. But the market gave it to me. And that's the way you make money. You trust yourself. You know what to do. You let the market give it to you. You can't push it along. You just can't. It's not like pushing a cart at Whole Foods through the grocery store. The market can't be pushed or prodded along. It has to do what it has to do. You cannot make it go the way that you want it to. You just can't. So the lesson for the week is, Go with the flow. Trust your instinct. You will sometimes make mistakes, but if you trust yourself, you learn from them. If you're new, you may not know what to do, so you'll trust yourself and then make a mistake and learn from it. If you don't trust yourself when you don't know what to do, how are you going to trust yourself when you do know what to do? I know what to do, and for that, I am grateful. But there's every once in a while, every once in a blue moon, I want to trade, I want to make a million dollars, and some days you get up, and it's just not there. And 99% of the days I trust myself and do the what I'm supposed to do. Today was a perfect example, and this was so hard. But yesterday, I was not a picky poo enough. And I really thought about that last night. Because really, nothing yesterday was fabulous. And we probably really should have done nothing yesterday, quite frankly. And we could have done nothing today. Because some of you don't know how to go long, and many of you don't know how to go long, but you could just do what I say. But this was hard. The profits are not coming from what you have on your ears, they come from what you have between your ears. Shining Star is becoming a philosopher. We're going to start calling Shining Star Play Doh. New Jersey Trader retook it, not that much size, but got paid. Yes, and if you held it, you got paid. Trade circle, there is no such thing as a gap fill. I know you're new, but that doesn't work.
You only see the daily. I don't know what you mean there. You lost me with the educated trade stuff. Um, Ashley says, you do not know how to go away from trading like you did yesterday. What do you mean? What's your, you lost me, Ashley. Write a more concise thing in the room. Here, Big is going to make another new high. 48.50 is the target on this. It will get there. This could go to $50 today. It's only 10.34. I don't know who you mean by they. All I'm talking about is me. There is no they. There is only me. <laughs> I live in my own world. No one else exists. Um, I always feel like missing what, Ashley? You mean as far as when there isn't anything to do? Is that what you're talking about? How do you get over the feeling of feeling like you missed something? Is that what you're talking about? How do you get over that feeling? Is that what you mean, Ashley? You're saying, how do I get over feeling like you're missing out on something? Or the feeling like you're missing out? Ashley, are you there? Or am I talking to myself? Hello? Is that what you mean? If it's not, I have no idea. Um, let me know, and then I'm going to look at the market. You work in the process industry. Your plant manufactures products 24 hours. Your mindset is you produce when the market is open. Okay, what's your point? You can't. Of course you produce when the market is open, but the point is, though, Ashley, if there's not an ideal perfect setup or gap to do or one that rates per the system and then sets up right, or if you have uh, uh, I, here, you're in the plant. You're in the plant. There's a leak. There's a leak in the plant. There's a fume uh, in the one area. There's something happened where there's fumes that went off in the plant. Now they've quarantined. They've quarantined that whole area. You can't go over there. Yes, the plant is open and you have deadlines and orders and they have to be shipped out by Monday morning at 6 a.m. It's Saturday morning. Now they've quarantined the whole area. You had to call the people. You had to rush them in. They're not even there yet. It's Saturday morning. How are you going to meet the deadline? Stuff has to be shipped by Monday. Are your butt is on the line? They're going to fire you. And not only that, the whole company will lose millions. How are you going to get this all done? By the time the people come in on Saturday, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and they don't even know how to fix the problem. Then they have to shut everything down, turn off the electricity, fix it, get the fumes out, air it out. By the time you're up and running, it's midnight. Midnight and Saturday night, you have exactly 32 hours to get the product done and manufactured and shipped out on time to not be delayed. What do you do? Can you get it done? It's pressure. It's a lot of pressure. Sometimes in life, there is pressure. Sometimes in life, things don't turn out to be the way that you want in the timing that you want, but they still turn out to be the way that you want, a.k.a. big, a.k.a. the market. You have to learn to roll with it, okay? This is what happens to people. If everything always turned out to be exactly the way that you thought it would at the time and that you want, no one would have any stress in life. You'd say, oh, whatever. If everything just came plopped into your lap without you having to do any work, which the work, by the way, is really in your brain. It's really in your head, as I just described, about trusting yourself. Then no one would have any stress, <laughs> okay? What separates the winners from the losers? People that are self-analytical, like me, Okay, for one thing, if you're self-analytical like me, you often think about these things and go back and review what you did and say, oh, if you can't look at yourself sometimes and go back and look, look, here, this is going to 48.50. This is going to run a dollar from where I got out of it and I had 3,000 shares. I could have made $4,500 on this today, but I did the right thing. And again, it's not about being greedy. Well, that really would have made for an amazing weekend, though. Here, look, this is going to run right up to 40. This could go to 49. I'm just so good at reading these things. Wow. I mean, I, I, anyways, getting back to what I was saying, you have to understand that this is what, it, sometimes it's crunch time. Sometimes it falls into your lap. I'm not saying it doesn't. Sometimes it's crunch time. Okay. 
When the market gives you a great gap, you do it. Sometimes the setup is an idea, like today in the big, but we still do it. When you don't get a good gap, you, couldn't, you can't do it at all. And you can't push the cart forward and move it along faster if it's not there because you're not going to move the stocks and you're not going to move the market and you're not going to force the thing to work. You can take 20 bazillion shares. It isn't going to matter. You can't force it. Some days you have to take a loss. It's not easy to take a loss if one trade doesn't work. But I will tell you that I'm very defined in what we do. So luckily, we don't lose that often. When we do, we're out the one loss very, very quickly. And I say, that's it. And we stop. And, and the more I do that, the better we're going to get. Why? Because we're seeing things clearly. It helps us, forces the discipline upon us, so that when a day like today happens with big and we know it's going to work, and have 100% conviction that it was going to work, then we have no hesitation. Because I was down $1,800 in this trade today, and I took the loss retook the trade with no hesitation, talk about confidence and conviction, and ended up the day making $1,500. And actually, if I had stayed in this trade up until here, I would have made over three grand and probably five or six by the time the day is up, but that would not make any sense. I do have a meeting at one o'clock, and you know, at some point you say, Whoa. and I really held this for quite a long time. I really could have held this for quite a long time, and I congratulate myself for doing everything I did in it, but this is still running higher. So this could go to $50 today. In fact, from my entry, let's just see if it went 3.5 times 3,000. This is insane. If this goes to $50 today from my original entry, if I stayed, had stayed in it, which I didn't, I'm out, I would have made over $10,000 today from being down $1,800 into the open. I'm just going to go back and look at this tonight after four, just, just for so, just for so and do a video because I'm telling you right now that that could actually happen and that's what I'm talking about. Now, I'm not at that place in my trading because to be honest with you, I like to trade in the morning and be done. Yesterday was a perfect example of that. Trade in the morning, be done. Trade in the morning, be done. Trade in the morning, be done. There was nothing to do in the afternoon yesterday. You couldn't have shorted anything yesterday on the planet. Not at 10 o'clock, not at 11 o'clock, not at noon, not at 1, not at 2, not at 3. When the gaps work, they set up in the morning and they go. That's it. That's the great thing about my system. And you know right away that they're good, like big here today. And it's doing it. And the problem is you don't know when they're getting to the target. I will tell you, though, that longs take so much longer to go to the target than shorts. That's one of the reasons I prefer to go short. Look, this is going to 49. Wow. Your point on personal behavior has to change when you sit back and, and look and feel exactly what you're explaining. Exactly. I get your point, Ashley, and it's true because I know it's hard. I know it's hard, but this is the mindset where you have to work on it. Do the work. Shorting is more easy. Of course it's easier. Why? Because things move and drop quicker. Panic comes into a stock more than stuff people buying it. There's no panic to buy this today. Are you panicking if you didn't go long this today? No. If you're not long it, you're, you're like, okay, fine. Maybe I should buy it. Maybe I should buy it. Maybe I should maybe, 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 maybe. And this is why it takes forever to go and then goes to some number, but it takes you all day. Meanwhile, if you're in something and you're down, when you get up in the morning, you're long the stock and you're down, you're, you're not thinking about killing it if you're down. And actually, if you were up a lot and now you're not up a lot, you're not thinking about exiting the long that you're in. You're like, crap, and you quick get out of it. And that's the panic. So we short that panic action. So of course, shorts go faster than longs. Why do you think I like to short? Sign guy, the class is this weekend, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Saturday and Sunday. If you want to retake the class, email me. If you're signed up for it, you'll get the information tonight. If you have not signed up for the class and you want to sign up for the class, today's the deadline. How much gap is what good? There is no percentage if that's what you're looking for. You're sure there's always some opportunity in the market? I disagree. I absolutely disagree. I'd like to say you're right, but I disagree with you. The fact is that some days there's nothing to do. There was more days this week there was nothing to do than any week I've ever seen, even during the holiday weeks. Look at this. Wow, I'm just going to give a round of applause to Big for performing today and following through and doing everything it should and more. This was so hard today, and I did everything right. I could not have done any better. I couldn't have. And I will tell you that it takes 
kahunas to even do what I did. But I will tell you that I would have made over four grand now in this right here if I'd stayed in it. But that would have been ridiculous after the week we've had and the market not knowing what to do. And it's 1045 and I have a lunch meeting that's very important today and I didn't even do my makeup. Here this goes. It's going to 49. It's over 48.50. This, a round of applause to Big. This is amazing. I love this stuff and I love that I can see it. I don't know what I love more. The money I make or the fact that I can see it. It's, it's, it's equal. It's like it's 100% equal. It's actually right there equal. I love the money I make, and I love that I can see it before it does it. It's really neither one is any better than the other. So I'm just as happy right now, even though I would have been up more money, of the fact that I saw it would do this. I mean, this is phenomenal. Uh, just keep doing what I say. I know that this week was unexpected, and the whole week was an anomaly, including yesterday. But I will tell you, if you stick with me, you will make money. And if you quit, then you will never make it. My ability to be able to see these things before they happen is phenomenal. And it's just as phenomenal as the money. It's equal. Some days I go back and I say this or that. It's just right there. Look at this. It's over 50, so it'll go to 49 now. Let's just look at the market. Look, see? Look at the market. And look at this. I mean, I knew this would work today no matter what. And that's the other reason I retook it. I, I knew the market could have fallen off a planet and it still would have gone. This is spectacular. Thank you, Shining Star. Have a good weekend. Great call today. Thank you. Cross said you're truly the best. Thank you. I know I saw you referred your friend to me. I'll reach out to him today. Can you make a re-entry? No trade circle. If you didn't take the call I made this morning on this, it's ran like $50 million since I called it. Why would you take this in here? This is exactly what I'm talking about. People now are like, hmm, maybe I should buy it. You should have bought it where I said. Otherwise, forget it. This is almost at the target. Why would you buy it here? Where would you put the stop? At $40? No, that'd be... There's no risk to reward. And the stop was big in this today. And the stops are big in longs. And if we did longs every day, our stops would be massive. Look at this. It's going away. This could go, oh, like, wow. 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 We just a great call today, Melissa. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa Armo. You signed in earlier for what, Ashley? You lost me? I don't think WSM worked, worked great yesterday at all. I think everything was Slop City USA. I did look at that when you texted me, but I think this was, like, very hard. At the time, you would have shorted this in here, which was the only setup. You could have done it with the tightest stop on the planet. And to do that on a $78, $77 stock, it like almost doesn't make any sense because you're almost like asking to be stopped out. Now, did it drop? Yes. Could you predict this would do that and break the low of the day? No. No, because the gap did not work right at all in the morning. Wouldn't have rated well either. Situated itself finally in and broke, but it was a piece of crap. It was a piece of crap yesterday. It's a piece of crap today, and the market was a piece of crap all week. Did this work? Yes. Could you predict this? No. Therefore, you don't do it. And that's you know, this stuff, the kind of thing you go back and you say, well, we missed this. No, we didn't. This was crap Ola. And actually set up in the morning broke and then rallied over the high and rallied over the high way after 10 o'clock with a market that was holding bullishly. It's easy to say now, well, this worked great with a 20 cent stop, but there's no way we could have done it. There's no way to predict it. It didn't have even a 50-50. This was a kamikaze times a thousand. You have to be able to see it. I can see this ahead of time and say, there it is. Let's just do it. And then if it stops us out, I said, take it again. It's still going to do it. And then it does. You have to be able to see what it's going to do ahead of time. And if you can't, it's a 50-50 or what I call a kamikaze. And this gap would not have rated well. And that's why ultimately it worked very, very sloppy. Very, very sloppy in the morning and went over the high at 1045. I know it worked. And if you made money doing it, congratulations. But I never would have done it. It was too tough. It was not something you could have predicted. If you're signed up for the class, you'll get the information later today. There was something else I was going to say, and I forget what. I don't even remember. Uh, anyways, this is phenomenal, and it did go past the target of 48.50, all the way up to 48.60, and it was a beautiful trade. I hope everyone learned a lot this week. It was one of those weeks where you did more learning than trading, if you were trading with me. We never traded less than we did this week in a week in the middle of the summer when there was not a holiday. And guess what? There is a holiday in two weeks. So who knows? These are very unusual times. You just have to roll with it. There's nothing else you can do. 
but roll with it. But you gotta trust yourself. And there's one thing in life, you have to be willing to take risks. If you don't trust yourself and you're not willing to take risks, you'll never be able to fulfill your dreams, whatever they are. And I'm not just talking about the market, I'm talking about anything, anything and everything, and anything and everything. All she lives. Um, are there any matches for the weekend? No. Melissa, you stayed with the ADSK because you watched it losing steam and got filled at 48.22. ADSK? I didn't even call that, but I'll look at it. Trailed and stopped at 47.50. Can I comment on this? Is this luck? Why didn't I like this? You're doing the course this weekend, I believe, Moses. You signed up. I would not have done this. I didn't even rate it. If you shorted this here, you got stopped out. Would I reshorted this? No. This didn't reverse swoosh. I don't like anything about this. I didn't like it originally. I don't know what you want me to say other than I don't like it. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like the daily. I like nothing. We'll take the class this weekend, then you can rate it. But... I would not have liked this. It would not have rated well. I didn't do it. I didn't even rate it. I didn't even rate it because I didn't think it would work, and it's not working. Could you have shorted this and made money if you scalped it? And you would have gotten stopped out once and had to retake it, and then I don't know how you would have even made out. Big was actually easier than this, even though big was hard. Big was, had profit in it, substantial profit with correct numbers. There's no number here that makes sense. It's actually green in the day. It's hard to make money in something that is green at 1050 if you're shorting. Just like it's hard to make money on something if it's red at 1050 if you're going long. But big is not red. Big is a massive, massive, massive green bar. And ADSK is not a massive green bar, but it's not really red. GME, I didn't like this gap either. I didn't like this gap either. Not even a whip. If you didn't have made money, great. I didn't like it and it would have rated well. And what did I just say? I gave the lecture and I said, I'm going to be a picky poo. And we're going to be a picky poo next week. And yesterday I wasn't a picky poo. And so when I saw this today, I said, picky poo. Mm -mm. This would not have rated well either. So the fact that it worked, I could give a crap. Picker poo. Had no volume in here. Didn't like the gap. Wouldn't have rated well. Never would have called it. Never would have called it and had a big stop. And I would have never done it. If you did and made money, congratulations. Could I predict what happened? No. Why? The gap wouldn't have rated well. And picky poo. Big was a good gap. That's why this is working. And that is why we did it. And not only that, we got stopped out and we redid it. And if you had held this all the way up here, you'd be up a massive amount of money. Either way, you'd be up on the day. And it was definitively something that we could have predicted and played out exactly as predicted. You cannot be upset about stuff that works that you cannot have predicted. You just can't. You have to be able to predict it. And then you do it. And that's the great thing about the market. The market is still higher. Again, I'll just say this and then let everybody go. The market retraced that crazy day it had within literally three days. And one of them was a gap down. And one of those three days was a huge red bar. And it didn't even matter. We're over it. We're over everything. The high of the day down on Monday. We're even trying to hold in a gap down today that might even rally into the close. Either way, I can't see anything other than something else crazy could happen in the world for this next coming week. It looks to me that the market will end up gapping up Monday morning and falling through higher, and I wouldn't even put it past the market continuing and rallying into Labor Day weekend because the market is strong, strong as can be. The recovery from the week is phenomenal, okay? And I predicted that. So, you know, what are you going to do? Um, ATVI, let me look at that quick and then I'll let everybody go. And then I really have to go, I'm going to be late. But I'm wearing these earrings on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday of next week and maybe every day for the rest of my life. They're beautiful. And they were a good luck charm today. Oh, I don't like this at all. If you're long it, I don't like it. If you're short it, I don't like it. Again, how do you go long something to make money when the bar is red at 10.53? You can't. Also, the market is probably not going to rally until into the close and could be sideways. 
I tried on the most gorgeous pair of earrings the other day. Same designer. I didn't buy them though. I just bought these. They were the most expensive jewelry I ever considered buying. I didn't buy them. But I'm going to have to up my risk if I'm going to buy jewelry like that. Actually, I don't have to do a whole haul. But not right now. I don't like this. Can you try a ring? I don't know what you mean by that. No, there's gold. It's 14 karat gold. The ones I tried on though were gold and also a jewel. I don't know what they were, but they matched the color of my eyes and they were $5,000. They were $5,000. They were $5,000 earrings. And these earrings actually are $2,500. It's the most money I've ever spent in a pair of earrings. But you get to a certain point in your life and you don't have a man, you have to buy real jewelry for yourself. I guess I'm there. I guess I'm there. I guess I'm there because I don't know if Prince Charming even exists, but I'll carry on and persevere with my chin up and buy my old earrings. So my own earrings and my own shoes and buy my own stocks. <laughs> Cause you get to a certain point in life and you said, that's it. I'm not waiting anymore to have a fabulous life. I'll just live it alone. But someday when I get my house in the Hamptons, we'll have a big party. The next time the market does something crazy, we're just going to take the whole week off because we really shouldn't have traded all this week. We made money, but it really was not an ideal week. You go, girl. <laughs> yes, aquamarine, I think it was, or something like that. <laughs> ah, GBH, I will go over your email tomorrow or Monday. Why? Because I have a meeting at 1 o'clock with, guess what, the television people. So, And I have to look beautiful with the earrings, so I can't be late. So let's talk about it on Monday. I will see everybody on Monday, bright and early, ready to go. I really hope it's a normal week. We'll chant on Monday before we trade. Apparently, it worked. <laughs> All right, have a good weekend. You too, everyone. All right, you're welcome. Thanks. Okay, Galahad. All right, you too.